Hoi hoi, it's Lewis here again, and for this reading vlog, I'm going to read Amari and the Night Brothers. Hooray! So, this is quite a popular middle grade fantasy book, and we'll see if I would say that this needs more hype, you know, if I would recommend it. We'll see it with my reading experience. I definitely would love to read a more like a black middle grade fantasy book. So, you know, I've been searching for them quite a lot. And this is one of those that are in like in my TBR pile. So, yeah, definitely, you know, <clears throat> excited reading this one. I am in the mood and most of the time will be in the mood for middle grade preteen books. So, yeah, especially like fantasy ones. So, We'll see how I feel, so let us begin reading this one. I'm gonna catch you both later. Whoa! Here's a reading update of Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Alston. Now I'm already in page 100 and so far it's been a good start. We follow the story of Amari who is searching for her brother who's been missing in like the last six months and one day like her brother appears in the form of illusion and she's being like taken to this like magical enchanting world. I mean first she got she like sort of gets a glimpse of like this like whimsical place and then like her brother like suddenly gave her like instructions you know and then also there was a delivery man who kind of like gave her a parcel of like what to do and then like there are a few things that like struck me in this book like for example you know how they say like every magical thing out there you know like exists it's just that not all people are able to see it or capable to see them um, because, you know, peace of mind, which, you know, going back to, like, Arusha, like, knowledge could be a burden. Like, knowing that there are, like, other things that exist that sometimes might frighten you or worry you, like, that could be a burden. <laughs> yes, and it does talk about, like, the different struggles of, like, Amari mm -hmm. and how, like, you know, she's being taught about, you know, um... You know, she has to, like, work hard, you know, or try to do something to change her situation and, like, the you know, harsh realities of life. But it wasn't, like, so overt, you know. It was, like, subtle, which is pretty cool. And I just find the world kind of whimsical, like, even at the beginning, which is wonderful. Even if there's not much, like, worthiness about it. I don't know. It's, like, something that I can't like pinpoint exactly but yes it is whimsical in its own way now at first i was thinking that it might be too soon or we can we get to the whole like you know um the part where she's like the chosen one and then she would be like me 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 and like i thought like it was i thought like if that was going to happen is too fast or kind of conventional which is not inherently like a bad thing but like you know um Honestly, I like the way that they like put a spin to it. Personally, for me, I was like thinking, you know, when they were introducing like the rank systems, I wish that, you know, um, Amari's story is going to be starting like a rookie or like the underdog and then like laddered up like that. But I like how, you know, when the Moonstone was given to her and like what her magical ability is, it was seen as like a dilemma. Like a challenge because of like the history that the world like had and i like now that they're about to like solve and figure out how did like amari became um 
how did she become a magician? So that's pretty interesting, you know, definitely something to look forward to. And yeah, I just love the world, you know, the Bureau of Supernaturals, if I got that correctly. But yeah, and so far, like when I started reading the chapters, like the premise reminded me of Dragon Pearl by Yoon Ha Lee. Let me show you the book that I'm comparing it to in a way. Just because, there you go, here's Dragon Pearl. Just because, like in terms of the premise, they are both looking for their brothers. And I'm definitely curious about how this is going to go. Because I know, like, what happened here. <laughs> but yeah, so I'm going to continue reading and I'll catch folks later. Whoa. So here's a reading update of Amari and the Night Brothers. Now I am more than 200 pages done with this one and I have to say that Amari went through a lot like you know all the challenges with Laura, you know what happened to Quentin, you know uh, talking to Moru and all these like other things that oh you just want to root for her and you know, Magician Girl 18? Mmm, like, that really surprised me who it is. But that, it kind of makes sense of, like, who it is going to be. Like, who else is it going to be? And Lara's um, characterization, or Lara's um, characterization, Lara, Lara, <laughs> comment down below how you pronounce it. <laughs> yeah, I, I, as far as I know, um, Lara, I think I call people Lara, or La, because you kind of call them Lara. Anyway, and that's about Lara because her characterization like was so effective yet you know as a person you're like mm, stay away from me arms left um Lara mm -hmm. arms left please because you know but the way that BB wrote her was just like mm, like it's going to unleash emotions out of you and that's what I like about books and you know um it's kind of like giving you that feels of being like in a sports competition you know you kind of like want to root with, you know root for amari and you know at the same time like you're just like nervous for her about all these like tasks that she's doing and yeah like that scene where she was like almost close in like conquering like the swing bags and yeah like but it was great, um, like, characterization because it wasn't like, oh, like, yay, 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 invincible. And, like, the way that Amari, like, doubts, like, herself, it's definitely, um, you know, a different kind of characterization which was, like, clearly depicted. And, like, there was, like, a bit of, like, remix pop references or, you know, um, things that were mentioned, like, throughout the story that like gave the setting a little bit more like cutesy vibes like it was cute to read them and the other net like their version of the internet was like kind of like adds to like the setting the world like it's um it adds like some cutesy vibes to it which is really amazing and you know when Lara like caught Mari you know doing some illusionist things and I was like about to just stop with like a chapter here but I decided to read a few more pages just because I wanted to know a little bit about what's gonna happen next and I'm definitely curious I still didn't get like a lot you know we just um see here that Amari kind of wants to back away you know with the, um, being like an agent or a junior agent but, like, I think that she would still, like, move forward. I mean, now in the scene where she gets to know, like, what she's, um, she has to prepare for, you know, the, um, tryout. So, hmm, definitely curious about what's going to happen. I'm definitely curious about what her decision is going to be and what's in it for the next scenes, you know, that blackmail video oh, i'm just like so nervous but that's the thing the narrative is really strong at the moment we are in it okay we are in it and with dylan you know as much as like he is really like nice i kind of like want to take his characterizations with a pinch of salt because i don't know like 
I'm not really much of a character driven person, but I kind of like am for some reason invested with Amari and I don't want to like be heartbroken that later on I'll be like I don't know like I, I just had like this sort of feels you know which is kind of the thing that they mentioned like as like an illusionist you should have like some trust issues you cannot just like take things at face value and that is something you know um, that's very profound and that's what I like about books in general and that's the thing about like middle grade or preteen books that are able to do like they have like all these profound yet subtle way of delivering it just you know also to be um, appetizing or palatable to like all readers or most readers you know regardless of your age and there is also a part here with like um, Amari's conversation with Mauro about like you know, it's just about, you know, between, like, the strong and the weak, you know, um, good or bad is, like, very arbitrary or subjective, and, like, since the, like, the test of time, you know, it's a, it's, like, those that are strong, like, you know, the things that they are upholding, and they've, really upheld that they were the ones that were like kind of chosen are the ones that are kind of like becoming the majority or like becoming the power which kind of made me contemplate about like certain things in life you know what i'm saying so it's gonna be I, I don't know like for me it made me contemplate about like is whenever i think about you know utilitarian you know or having more visibility you know who comes up coat and coat like strong you know so yeah i definitely thought that was profound like there were so many there were like profound things are being talked about you know which is really great and they weren't like in your face i'm gonna tell you about like life which is definitely something that can cater to not only middle grades but if you just want to kind of like lie low not too like intense in terms of like how the narratives go like the um how the governance goes or the, like how the political things go like definitely you know this is a good one you know and yeah i like it so far so i'll catch you folks later Whoa. so here's a reading update of amari and the night Predators. i'm already more than 300 pages done and i have to say that i was satisfied with how dylan saved amari because you know <laughs> finally um we get to know that amari is still safe you know she gets to continue without worrying about that video and I like the fact that BB like kept the world like vibrant and whimsical, like the momentum. It, I'm still like enamored and like awed about how beautiful the world building is. And that revelation about why Quentin like came to um, uh, the other um, director, <laughs> yeah, that revelation about what Quentin is trying to figure out about Maria. Ooh, that was like, whew, that was something to watch out for. And now that we are in the second tryout, we get to find out if, you know, um, Dylan and Amari are going to pass the tryout. I was worried that they're going to have like another conflict along the way, but nope, they're still going to be working together. And that's suitable for like a middle grade reader. So yeah, I'll catch you folks later. Whoa. So I just finished reading. Amari and the Night Brothers by B.B. Allison and I would have to say that my reading experience is tremendous. Ah, like this is a majestic book. Like, this is how like, you know, when I was reading Dragon Pearl, like it has elements of like, you know, searching for your brother and also kind of like has a similar premise to Amari and the Night Brothers. Like, this is how it should have been done. Like, I'm thinking, like, now, why did it take me so long to read this one? You know, I mean, it is what it is. But it's kind of like, you know, because this is kind of, like, known, I wasn't really expecting too much about it just because I'm kind of, like, trying to manage my expectations. And it is one of, like, the hype middle grade um, fantasy books, you know, and it is for a reason and based on like how I, you know, um, read, you know, based on my reading experience, I have to say that it does live up to the hype. Like I recommend 
Amari and the Knight Brothers, now from like the whimsical setting. And even if, I know this is like tagged as fantasy, but I can consider this as like a sci-fi fantasy book just because of like, you know, the way that they incorporated some like, you know, scientific and technical stuff without being, you know, too technical. And to me, it's like, it is appropriate for like, you know, um, readers um, that are like, you know, of Belgrade, like it's good for all readers. Now Salem decided to like turn his back. <laughs> That's okay. Um, and yeah, like the setting, the world building, it was enchanting all the way. It was consistent. Like the way, like everything about this book is consistent from the characterizations, like how the circumstances every now and then were brought up that really made sense of the overall narrative. It was action packed. I was seated about like what is going to happen next from the twists. Like, you know, um, there were some things that I knew that it was going to happen. Like, you know with Dylan? Like, I knew that there was something suspicious about him. He is another Letitia from Babel, you know? Kind of like that, that white blonde guy, you know, white blonde person who's going to, you know, betray somebody. Like, you know, I call that like the Letitia vibes. You know, any basically anyone who's going to be like a traitor you know, in the story. So, yeah. And right now he's locked up. So, and that makes me think about like when I was looking at the cover of Amari and the Great Game, which, you know, I kind of feel a bit bad about saying that's a beautiful cover because Dylan is in the cover. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comment section down below, but like, ugh. And I'm thrilled about what's going to happen next. You know, I really... I'm hoping that, you know, we're not going to get into a lot of stress in the next book because, you know, if there's character development, it really is genuine and not some like, you know, um, but, you know, if it's going to make me mad, you know, it's going to be an effective narrative. But, you know, like, if I were in the situation, if this was really happening to me, I don't want like Dylan to be like I had character development and then all of a sudden I am gonna betray you again shame on you because you were fooled twice <laughs> but anyway I'd have to say like the combination of like you know there was a scene here like you know I was thinking mm, you know for a minute it's like BB you made me think you, you almost got me there BB Austin but yeah overall it was fantastic, and yes, I had a happy reading, so I, I was like, and I, I like how there were some profound things that were mentioned every now and then, but it wasn't like, you know, um, it was a perfect balance of like fantastical setting, action pack, and some profound teachings about, you know, one thing that this book tried to really portray really well is to take things with a pinch of salt, you know? Don't take things at the face value. You know, you gotta like think critically. You have to keep your guards up a little, just a little bit, you know, but still be, you know, compassionate. And I like, you know, how Amari is like, makes you think about, you know, compassion and still being like humane, even if, you know, this is a fantasy novel how she would not use foul magic and, you know, basically, like, upholding what you, like, believe and stand on, you know? So, yeah, it's going to make you think about things which is suitable for, like, middle grade or preteens, you know, for especially for the target audience, like, ages 9 and the, between 13 years old or 14, you know? Um, and, of course, it is suitable for teenagers and adults alike, so... Yeah, so very appropriate, I'd have to say. Good job, BB. I'm giving this book 5 out of 5 stars. Let me know down in the comments section below if you've read Amari and the Night Brothers or if this reading vlog made you decide to read Amari and the Night Brothers. And if you've made it this far, leave like an open hand emoji. So I hope you folks like this video if you did, be sure to give it a thumbs up. Also, click that subscribe button and hit that little bell icon somewhere down there to keep yourselves posted about my videos. 
Also put down links and handles on my social media accounts. So feel free to check me out and follow me there and support me there as well. As always, thank you so much for watching. Always be thankful and unleash the reader in you. Bye, y'all.